Hi there and welcome back to Peters of Eternity 2 Deadfire. We have reassembled our old group. The Lord Paul here, if anyone knows how we can really name him, please tell. So, um, we're back exploring the wild mare. And there's some people who probably want to give us something to do with this guy. Ado, my friend. I knew our paths would cross eventually. Do I know you? A valiant shouts over the din of the wild mare to get your attention, turning a great many heads to study your exchange. I'll bet you say that to all of your clients. <laughs> mm, ah, do I know you? Not yet. But I know that we will be fast friends. Yeah, I mean, you sound trustworthy. You are the one who sails that fine ship, Ak. Terrorize the docks with spirits, Ak. Leaning in close, he sips from the tankard and loudly sucks moisture from his upper lip. Who is asking? I am Aboko, and I am positioned to offer. Uh, I have opportunities for. He clumsily unfolds a sheaf of parchment. The tankard slips in his grasp and spills ale down the front of his trousers. He gawks down at himself in horror. A thousand times I practice my speech. Mera. Never <laughs> <did it this point. laughs> okay. He is fun to talk to, right? Uh, yeah, that would be cool. We had a good laugh. On his coast. We're benevolent right now. That's not really benevolent, really. That's also a little bit cynic. Give him an ale. Here, you need this more than I do. do you know what my problem is, Aimiko? Yes, you're nervous. He accepts the tankard and drinks deeply. I am supposed to be in the business of giving bounties, but I know no one who hunts them. He stamps his feet, gigging up a spray of spilled ale. No one will unfurl their sail for my humble payments. But I must start from the bottom and work my way to the top, Ak. Mm, yes, I mean, you'll get there someday. Let's encourage him. Maybe he'll give us better money then. You'll get there someday. If you are ever lacking in drinking money, you know where to look. He sighs down at the mess of his trousers. You seem down on your luck, friend. That I have stumbled in my career path. Aboko clears his throat. Now that I have such an accomplished hunter, I can stand in the long shadow of your success. Yeah, let's do this together. It's not all bad, but the momentum of meeting new clients over drinks and in such enchanting company, it drains the stamina, my friend. What bounties do you have available? You, you will take the job. You will take the job. He grips you by the shoulders and smiles, tear, tears springing to the corners of his eyes. Something special for my first hunter, then. He drains the tankard and tucks it under his arm to retrieve his sheaf of notes. Oh, God, that cannot, that can only go wrong. Uh, I will start you on Maria, the mad animancer. She tortures her victims with unspeakable treatments before casting what's left to Bereth's will. Actually, my contact saw her leaving Port Magia and heading west of Magia Island. Actually, she joins the goddess of death in the beyond. My first bounty to pay off. An exciting day for us both. Boko passes you a small patch of coins, and we get some minor positive for Nikitaka. Great. Maybe it's not much, but as I make more deals, more pyres will be available. Okay. Pyres. A common base currency of the Valian Republics. What other bounties do you have available, good friend? Ah. I finally managed to land the rights to a bounty of value. You may not like it. There is a thirsty drake who roosts near an oasis northeast of Magia Island. An important site for refilling canteens. The local tribes call him Purakeo, after a sea dragon of legend. Even so, they have no love for this water thief. Hmm, some questions. You have but to ask. Just just for you to speak freely, do you know more about Purakao the Drake? Uh, and I'm still scrounging together the coin for your next mission. Boko wings you at you. Okay, nothing more. Mark, I will be ready, Ak. This obsession with, with heads, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'll lead the way. Uh, 
Actually, why I'm exchanging this is um, sometimes you have encounters and then the first one here in line <laughs> stands at the front. Like, not counting the actual uh, the actual formation. Oh. Hey, who, can we help you? Where in the blazes is that old man? Got a load of those outfits, eh? There's Captain Radora. So now there's a, there's another a couple of dancers. What are they doing here? Okay, they're dancing. There's something to resolve here with Captain Radora. Was a task from the ship. Uh, you say I right. down the rest? Watch me, I Miko. A valiant sailor raises her tankard and arches her back to invite a torrent of ale down her expectant mouth. Holding this pose with nothing to show for it, she taps the tankard's base and furrows her brow at its apparent emptiness. A companion shakes his head and focuses his attention elsewhere. As she wipes her mouth with the back of her hand, her eyes widen and meet yours. She gapes at you and swallows. Uh, we could make her drunk even more. The next grog is on me. Even in the oasis I am parched. She pockets the coins and glances past you to the bar. If you grant wishes, there is a vacancy on my ship. Radora's frown cracks to reveal a shy smile. The captain of the Defiant I'm already taken. We'll, no, we'll, we'll do something. We'll show off. Ask me again once I've recovered my soul. Blinking at you, Radora reaches under her shirt to clutch a small undried medallion. Then may the Lady of Lament speed you along. Ooh. Flirting. You don't seem to be having as much fun as the rest of the clientele. She manages a wan smile. When the dancers see more than an empty purse, I will be a content Randona. She sighs up at the stage. Samar actually sent me to collect your debt. Merla, and he hired muscle. Adora takes a shaky step back. Sientere, but you are too late to collect. She holds out her palms and flinches at the blow that doesn't come. A gang in the northern alley stole every coin. I cannot hire a crew, much less repay Zamar. Oh my god. Redora slowly lo lowers her trembling hands. Why don't you tell me what happened? These lights drew me like a moth to the alley north of the wild mare. Her eyes turn downcast. She's so drunk. And the blow to the back of the head that followed, mare light hurt. He touches the spot behind her ear and hisses. Then a wolf sat on my chair <coughs> while a group what? of thugs went through my pockets. A wolf? A werewolf? Ah, it growled like a thunderstorm and drooled on my uniform. That rhymes. Radora pats a stain on her shoulder. I stumbled back here and traded all I had left for the comforts of the mare. Oh, hmm. I don't believe you. I'll take that coin of your corpse. No, no. I mean, we're sympathetic to her. Just flirted with us too. Maybe we are easily influenced by that, because no one ever dares, usually. And here, Samar is having some pirate trouble. Could this gang be connected? If they wanted Zamar to thirst for coin, oh, it is possible. Botsos would regret it when I turn my cannons to their mast. Radora raises her empty mug as the vow is struck. Bazos, a very term for the penis, oh god. <laughs> Pejorative sins. What the. yeah. 
Sounds like my quarrel is with this gang. Farewell. When you got their leader, tell them Radora sent you. She raises her mugs, mug and winks. Alright, so we got more here. Interesting. Very interesting. We need to look further here. Maybe ask Gentle. Do you have some no. rumors? What can I do for you? Can you see uh, entertainment. Well, yeah, there is entertainment. Oh, look at that. We could take something here. A Daibo Osa. What is that? Ranging from clear to slightly cloudy white, this liquor is distilled from a mixture of two different rices. One short grain, the other long in water from a mountain spring. The island of Osa, the strongest liquor native to the dead fire, Daibo, is generally served warm. It's particularly popular among the artisan caste. Featured regularly in Juana popular culture, especially plays and songs, Daibo or Osa perennially shoulders the blame in discussions about what's ruining the Juana young. Well, we'll take what's, what's ruining the young and we'll save them through it. Who's here? Rhythm is a dancer. Is that rhythm? Are you rhythm? No. Quit snooping. There's someone else here. Who is that? Oh, is that an Orlan? A young woman lingers near the stage with a mug of ale clutched tight in her hands. Though she shows no interest in the dancers, the bags beneath her eyes speak to many long nights spent drinking in the tavern. She looks lazily about the room until her gaze alights on you with interest. Have you seen an old elf hanging around here lately? Dress is funny. Probably drunker than an eel in a barrel of mead. Why do you care? That old goose punter owes me a fair bit of coin. She takes a deep drink from her mug, concludes it with a tremendous belch. <laughs> we like her too. Uh, how much are we talking to? About. She leans close and whispers conspiratorially in your ear. Five thousand coppers, if you'd believe it. <gasps> that sounds good. And if you give me my money back, I'll give you a twenty percent share as thanks. Twenty percent. I'd rather eat my boots. No. Hmm. Twenty percent, but I'll be doing all the work. Fine, fine. Andra's great sagging tits. Fine. You can have 40% and rights to whatever baubles Oswald has on him. Oswald? Look who it is. Um, yeah, we want to know more about Oswald. And about you, who are you? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. But hey, what the hell? She rakes an impatient hand through her dirty hair. I'm one of the countless minor nobles that litter the Deerwooden countryside. You know Admeth Hadrett, hero of the War of Defiance? He's my great, great, whatever. Okay, so you're kind of sympathetic for being a noble. Um, pardon my impertinence, my lady. <laughs> we could, no. So what's the problem with that? When people find out, they start doing weird shit. Calling me lady, opening doors for me, buying me drinks. Really, the title is a mockery. It means nothing to me. And what's your history with that Oswald? She groans theatrically, like she can't bear to recount the tale. Uh, a man's a family friend. Has been for... Uh, must be four generations now. The perk of being an elf, eh? And what does o Oswald owe you money for? She stares into the depths of her mug and sighs. It's my fault, really. I should have known better than to believe that damned old drunk knew what he was doing. The man's a wizard. You understand, and a tinkerer. He convinced himself and me he could, with enough luminous Adra, create a device that would add years to one's life. Well, that would have been good, right? It must have been a crock of shit, because one day he up and ran without a word of explanation or apology. Something might have gone wrong, and we have another necromancer. I thought I knew him better than that. All right, farewell. We'll try to find that Oswald. Hot dances here. Ooh. Take our next steps up, upward. Oh, who is in there? What is in there? Another dancer? 
a dancer's quarters. The cook, when's Gentle gonna hire that assistant he promised me? All right, we won't talk to you anymore. Let's go to the upper floor. Oh, I've discovered something here. One a charm belt. Wave for twenty percent stride. One survival. Hmm. Apart from holding up one's trousers, belts are much favored by enchanters. Okay. Um. Who's our survival guy? Twenty percent stride is also pretty good. How quickly a character can run in combat. That would be important to us, right? Do we have... We have nothing on the waist, so... There we go. Most importantly... There's a couple of people here, and there's something we can take again. Scroll of Prayer for the Buddy... Poems from Er Glanfath. Shall we shall we read it poem together? Let's see if it's terrible or okay. The tree, the wind, who shall hear the voice of the wind? Its beauty resplendent, unseen, intangible. Its tongue whispers the oath. I move, I carry, always I will I fly, and always will I change, for nothing is permanent, nothing escapes my grasp. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's great. But look at that look at that art here. What do we have here? Herf warts. A questionable street food served to the adventurers of starving. It started life as some sort of mushroom. It is probably completely safe to eat, probably. Something more against the youth or something like that. Um, hmm. Talk to this guy in the corner here. Assume the position. Um, okay. Are these the guys you and girls you can amuse yourself with? See Emir. something you like? Undoubtedly. The dancer turns to greet you, a coy smile tugging at his lips. He's short for an elf, but no less graceful for his lacking hate, height. His long face and dark eyes lend him a solemn air, but any hint of gloom is chased away by the wash of colour in his Did cheeks. You enjoy the show? There's more to see, if you're interested. Tell me about yourself. Who are I you? Suppose. He looks at you with a newly critical eye. We're just interested in the people here, trying to find out about... Yeah, the criminals there. I was raised in the Adir Empire. When I was young, I studied to be an arcane knight. After an incident at my school, I left the continent and wandered until I found myself in Nikitaka. As you can see, I stayed. What kind of incident? Um, oh, we can probably know. A handful of my fellow students got up to a bit of mischief that ended... Oh, okay. ...people dead. His gaze lingers on the floor, the cushions, the tables, anywhere but your face. After a moment, he shrugs, offering no further explanation. Uh, something else? I suppose. I was raised in the Adir Empire. Yeah, so how did you become young, a courtesan? To be same as any of the courtesans here, I imagine. Brushes his hair back from his face with a sigh. His long-suffering smile says he's answered this question many times I before. I aptitude. I trained with a master, and when I was ready... I began accepting clients of my own. But we have the insight to say there has to be more to your story than that. There is more to every story. He counts his head to the side, inspecting you with narrowed but eyes. The rest of it belongs to me, and I don't care to share it. Until okay, later. never mind. <sighs> he could have known that old elf, right? Ainalis. A young woman reclines on the cushions, a hooker nose held delicately in one hand. Eyes closed, she sings to herself. Her voice is soft and inviting. 
She doesn't move when she hears your approach, but slowly opens her eyes with a with a lazy Come. smile. Lay your head on my breast. I will read to you the work of my favorite poet, Skilba. Oh, who are you it's then? It's futile to attempt to summarize the whole of a person in simple words. How to capture their dreams, the desires of another, their feel and taste. Philosophical. But I appreciate your curiosity nonetheless. I am an actor. <laughs> Trained from childhood. Difficult for you to believe, I'm sure. A teasing smile pulls at the corner of her lips. Her voice is wistful. Almost melancholic. My troop were my family, and we travelled the whole of the Adir Empire, performing the classic literatures to cheering audiences. Sounds like a pleasant life. The work was good when the crowds were grateful, and their pockets swelled with coin. She gives you a pained smile and looks away. I found a more dependable application of my talents here. To touch the hearts of others with my voice. I could not give that up. Indeed, indeed. Have you come to hear some verse? Ah, uh, no. We, we we want to know more about it's you. It's futile, to, but I. My troop were my family, and okay. we, the work was good when the. I found a more dependable applicant. Farewell. Okay, she always repeats because of that. I'm quickly ending this. Who is that? Rabiuna. She says a fire godlike woman polishes a pair of stocks. Tending to them with the fondness of a mother for her favorite child. The room is dim, illuminated only by the glow of her steel forged skin. Her eyes burn with the light of Magrin's fire. To hear as you enter, she shoots you a look of utter contempt. I will give you an experience you won't soon forget. That's kind of creepy. Tell me about yourself. I must assume the question beneath your question is how a fire godlike came to find herself in a place such as this. She leans back against the wall of chains. They clank and rattle, and she smiles at the sound. Perseverance. Being as I am, I have been forced to find it for myself. Now I teach it to others. To live in a world as a thinking, feeling creature, it is difficult. It demands strength. But we cannot always be strong. I help those who have lost their strength to find it again. She wraps a chain around her arm and tugs. The steel links glow red with forged fire where they touch her skin. I understand. Never mind. It's a little bit dangerous with you, isn't it? I'll see it done. What's in here? Or who is in here, rather? That guy girl. A burly dwarven man hums a jaunty tune to himself as he fastidiously organizes his collection of scented oils. He hears you enter the room, he greets you with a smile and a humongous outstretched hand. His grip is strong and sure. <laughs> he slaps his knee with a bark of laughter. Get it? Ablutions? Absolution? Ha! I crack myself up. Gets me every time. He wipes a tear from his eyes, still chuckling. Massage, bath, whatever you need. Just ask. Uh, how did you end up here? Oh, you don't want to hear about that. I lived a boring life, so... There wouldn't be much to the telling. He crosses his thick arms over his chest. A slight blush spreads across his cheek. Indulge me. Uh, truth be told, my real passion is pottery. <laughs> Trouble is, I got these big hands. <laughs> Not meant for delicate work. He turns his hands palm up for you to inspect it. Just one is easily large enough to cover your entire Worked face. Out in the end, of course. Now I specialize in relieving tension in a mower and death godlike. He nods to himself. You seem bored here. <sighs> I guess I can't hide my feelings as well as I thought I could. <laughs> he gives you a nervous chuckle and scratches at his beard. Stability's good and all, but uh, I haven't seen anything that gets my blood pumping in ages. You know what I mean? What's life without a little excitement? Doing the same old thing day in, day out. It's enough to make a man leap from the nearest window. He nods rigorously. Ah, you could come with me. He raises an inquisitive brow, his large hands previously dancing with restless energy still. You know that 700 foot tall made statue, a tall statue made of Adra? I'm going after it. No kidding. He nearly drops a bottle of massage oil in his excitement. <sighs> I like to see something like that for myself. 
He sighs a wistful edge in his voice. You think I could come with you? Just for a bit. That would be fun, right? But no, we have our group together. Maybe another time. He frowns slightly, then shrugs and turns a sunny green on you. You ever need a hand, don't forget about all Constantine. I'll just be right here. Waiting. His eyes drift to the floor. Maybe we'll revisit him again, but now it's time to leave this place and explore further into the Queen's birth. Can we get in there even? We'll find out in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Oh, the Queen's birth is of course outside. Well, we need to go outside and then to the temple or something. Have a good time until next time and happy gaming.